Hey, everybody, it's Mike Pingo from Collector's Haven. Thank you for joining us for another fantastic collection. Today we have John. He is from India. Yes, we're going international. I guess that's international. <laughs> we are going to be talking about Scooby-Doo. Yes, Scooby-Doo, by the way, um, if I was on top of it, turned 52 this month, which we are. And that's why we're talking about Scooby-Doo. 52 years of scooby scooby doo Where are you? And we know where they are. They're in with John right now. That's where Scooby-Doo is. Hey, John, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> oh, like, anyway, that was just Scooby's voice. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. I was going to say, what is wrong with your voice? It's so beautiful. <laughs> That's one of the only other voices I try to do every other day. <laughs> Well, well, John, thanks for coming. Thanks for thanks for being a guest on the show. How long have you been collecting Scooby-Doo for? Uh, well, um, to be honest, uh, I think if you ask me vigorously, it would be for the past seven years ever since, or for the past five years ever since I started earning. But uh, prior to that, uh, ever since I was young, any other opportunity I got, I would collect. But we didn't have many of the uh, resources available. Uh, so most of the, my collections right from the time I was young, except the first one, everything else was like, you know, when you get free for something, you know, buy fruits, uh, you get some free Scooby-Doo tattoo or you get some Scooby-Doo sticker. That, that was my collection when I was young. And then there was uh, a sudden ex uh, op opportunity with the online um, you know, platforms, right? Ever since Amazon and all came into the picture, that's when I got the opportunity to collect more for the past about seven years, you can say. Absolutely. But when you're a kid, it's not really collecting when you're a kid. You're just like having fun and playing with toys, right? So you weren't really collecting. I mean, because I, I, when I was a kid, I, I didn't know what collecting was, but I guess I was a collector because I was hoarding. I mean, I guess I'm more of a hoarder of stuff, but then I was like, Later on, and when we get older, we call it collecting. So we, we're, we're not so, um, it's, 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 a, it's a nicer upper, up, uppity way of saying that, that we have a bunch of toys in our house. <laughs> For me, it was more of uh, the fact that I come from a lineage of collectors. Like my granddad used to collect stamps. My grandma used to collect coins. So uh, it was there in our blood, I guess. And I used to collect, that time we didn't have option to collect Scooby-Doo stuff, right? So um, I used to just get, get Every week I used to get a new car or something, but I didn't think of it as a collection as such. Like you said, I didn't have that in my mind. But back in the day, uh, I used to collect like anytime I see Scooby-Doo in any newspaper, I have all the collections what, uh, whatsoever. I can show them to you as well. Absolutely. So uh, every time I found Scooby in a newspaper, I would cut and collect. So that was the thing I used to do back in the day. <laughs> I did the same thing with Charlie's Angels. I did the exact same thing. So, yeah, I can show you some of them. Yeah, show us. Show, show me. I'd love to see them. So, I mean, it shouldn't fall down, but um, you can see, like, you know, every time Scooby came in the newspaper, I have, like, collections here. And then there's uh, another one over here. And there was... Let me give you a second. So... I hope you can see here another one. So this. Oh, that's fantastic. This, yes. And here, I mean, each one would be a Scooby thing, you know? And then this was Scooby Doo every time Scooby came in the newspaper. I mean, uh, not newspaper. Uh, it was every time Scooby was telecasted, I had a uh mentioned what time it used to come at what time so 7 a.m was the scooby-doo and scrappy-doo show so 5 a.m 4 p.m you had the scooby-doo movies and uh, scooby-doo and the legend of the vampire which came on 26 11 2006 at 7 p.m so like that i used to collect every data so <laughs> if cartoon network or somebody wants to so here's one thing when we had like a day dedicated to scooby you know, a month dedicated to Scooby actually in 2006, November. So every episode, every season, everything was like recorded. <laughs> so if I Cartoon Network that. or anybody wants to know when Scooby came in India, 
I have the data. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I have, I've, I clipped all those little things with my angels when they would come on and they would tell everything what that whole episode was about and what day it was. That's fantastic. So <laughs> how, how, how long has Scooby-Doo been playing there? See, uh, to be honest, I was just having this conversation with my mom uh, before the session and I was uh, thinking about this. And uh, uh, honestly, we, the 90s kids, are the first generation to grow up with television. So we were the first ones to have, I mean, like even our parents' time and all, only when they were in the 20s or 30s, uh, not 20s, or just before marriage, probably that's what my mom was telling me. That was the time when they first had their own television, you can imagine. Wow. So uh back in the day it would be only for the e-light like once in a big community they may have one television that's it <laughs> so they didn't have television so we were the youngest uh the first generation to have this television and all of that so for me uh, i was feeling like oh my goodness am i the only collector so so what happens is i'm the only one who is like okay you're not grown beyond the kind of a thing people have that because in india the mentality is if it's a cartoon it's for kids and mm -hmm. if you if it's uh, non animated it's for adults so you're an adult why are you still watching cartoon <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of a picture comes but then if it's in an animated form even if it's something stupid people will allow their kids to watch just because it's cartoon <laughs> right so exactly exactly is scooby-doo still playing there um actually yesterday i saw in the uh, television it's coming in the midnight at 1 p.m oh, wow. 1 a.m or something <laughs> It's wow. so stupid, actually. I stopped watching Cartoon Network ever since uh, they started promoting more stuff, Indian content than Scooby-Doo and all the good old cartoons. So <laughs> that's a disadvantage again. And the disadvantage again uh, for us here in India is that uh, I still remember back in the day when I was young, uh, Scoop, the Cartoon Network was not functional 24-7 as well. So for Cartoon Network was functional only during the daytime. And by uh, night till the midnight, it would be some other channel, something like that. So it's called TNT, I think, something. <laughs> that was when I was a kid. Till about almost 2000 or 2001 is when Cartoon Network actually became, uh, you know, a 24 bar 7 channel. Okay. So, and so the disadvantage about Scooby, uh, for me, even in, the, in terms of watching programs was like, uh, what used to come, like, for example, the pup name, one of the series of Scooby-Doo, right? It came to India only in about 2000, but it was actually released in the U.S. in the 1980s. Mm. So you can see there's always a backlog by the time it comes. Like, even now I know that yesterday a new Scooby-Doo movie called the Scooby-Doo and uh, Coverly Dog um, movie came to U.S., but I have no idea when I get to watch it. <laughs> you can't buy it so, on, on your Amazon, on your Amazon or... No, many of the things we don't have direct access. And okay. so even if you do want to watch, uh, we don't have the access. Like says, this is not available for you in your country. So many of those websites, they keep it only within the, you know, like Amazon only thing is we could get Scoop the movie. That mm -hmm. was like a big time release. So we were able to get it. But otherwise, it's not easy to get. Oh, wow. And now the current thing that I told you that's being, uh, you know, like right now being telecasted in India is something that came uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's coming to India just now. <laughs> wow. So you <clears throat> do you have friends uh, in the States or in Canada or other places where they send you stuff, send, send you collectibles? Uh, actually, no, I don't. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the sad thing. So it's I'm just sad. waiting for if at all one of my hearts desire when I want to come to you as the first thing I'm going to do is, you know, add something to my Scooby collection. <laughs> Go, go to the DVD. Actually, I thought I was really like a hero when I had my collection. Like people used to say, wow, you have such a big collection because uh, it I have like a variety of things right like i don't like to just collect like okay just toys just toys i like different kinds of things okay this yeah. my toothbrush this is my first one i anyway reserved it for the time you're going to ask about what's my first uh member of Ilya. so i have like everything different you know this is my um what do you call this phone cover phone case and there's the uh, scooby-doo uh socks or uh, five of them so <laughs> wait, wait, wait have you worn the socks because they don't look like they've been worn no, I didn't want to wear it. What? 
No, I can't. I mean, this is part of my collection. I maybe the at the most what I wore would be my T-shirt, and then I, only for photo shoots I wore the mask and uh, two masks I have, and then my uh, only the phone and the, what do you call this phone cover and my laptop cover. I used to use it, and and that used to be like there. And I used to use our uh, clocks. This. So they are there in our oh, front room. Nice. I like that. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the two clocks that we have. This is the other one, but it will show a different thing. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, so yeah, do you find um, do you find a lot of collectibles in the, in in made there in India that that you go and find or? Is uh, that- it's very difficult to get them. Actually speaking, uh, except my Scooby toothbrush, everything else is from uh, you know, like bought in India, bought from India. Uh, my latest to the collection was, was my mystery machine, which came yesterday. Uh, and this came all the way from US and this mystery machine, uh, you won't believe this, but I spent more money on the tax than on the product, actually two and a half times more. Yes, yes. <laughs> American people don't understand about the taxes and the shipping, you know, we understand about the shipping. Yeah, but- shipping was okay. I thought at the most, uh, okay, I, I was uh, actually... I remember when I was uh, around 18 years ago, I went to a shop and there was a mystery machine and I fell in love with it. It's like, God, please let me get it. But unfortunately, I didn't go with my parents. So whoever went, it was like a, he's a costing a buck. So like, no, we're not going to get it for you. So I was so overjoyed. Like after 18 years, I'm going to have my very own mystery machine. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, so finally I was like, okay, fine. I, this was going to be my uh, 28th birthday present uh i just turned 28 last month august 12th so i look 28 by the way you look like you're 14 so no you don't look 28 seriously you're so sweet thank you so uh so that's when i ordered this and finally i was like glad it came but they gave me a shock like you have to pay extra two and a half times the amount just for the tax unless and until we won't get this like oh man pay a price for it (laughs) That's why when I usually ship on eBay, I put the price at like ten dollars when it, even if it's a hundred dollar thing, because it's, <laughs> it's so sad. Actually, this was my first eBay uh, product. So, <laughs> oh, that was your first eBay thing. Wow. Did you yeah. buy it now, or did you have to bid on it? Was there a bidding war? I don't know. I'm not. Sh- I, this was my first time. I actually, I came to know about eBay uh, that it actually delivers to India because I used to, I didn't know about that because I used to search on Amazon and all of that. And most of those products don't deliver to India. So, okay. so this was my, actually kind of like my trial, <laughs> whether it's going to work out or not, because they, they placed the order. And then after that, they cancel, sorry, we can't deliver to you and all oh, that. No. So yeah, <laughs> it, it happens. I know. I know. I, I, I try to get with my angel collections a lot of the stuff i i want now is from europe and and there's a in spain there's a, there's some little little bitty cards like this big that cost like a arm and the leg and i'm like <laughs> oh, i want them no one gets christmas gifts this year because i bought the whole set no i didn't <laughs> All right. um so what is, uh, let's look, uh, what was, so the hardest thing, of course, now to find for you is, you know, stuff from the U.S. And that's fantastic. You, or is there something else you're looking for on eBay that you're looking at? You're, you're like, hmm, that's my next item. Or now are you like um, worried about Yeah, that? my next item, I, I've been waiting and looking for this for a pretty long time. I wanted a Scooby to watch. <laughs> that's the only accessory I still haven't got. <laughs> So I'm waiting for the chance I can buy a Scooby-Doo watch. And that's a great way to show off, you know. Like, I have the Scooby-Doo pen drive, which is cute. This is one of my favorite. Can you see it? So. Yes, I this can. This is one of, yeah. So Scooby-Doo pen drive is one of my favorite things. And it's a great way to advertise Scooby. Everywhere you go, you showcase your Scooby-Doo pen drive. It's like, yeah, how did you get this? And that's so and cute then, because usually the ones I have are just like those little slide things that just sit on the desk, and but that actually sits up and. Aww. Yeah, this is really so cute. Really so cute. I just love whoever made this. You know, brilliant. <laughs> that that is fantastic. So okay, talking Scooby Doo. Who is your favorite character? Oh, that's 
a very hard one to go. So the one I dislike or the one I despise <laughs> or the one I don't like is Velma because she's like the intellectual one and I don't like that kind. <laughs> but uh, I, if I were to answer in different ways, I like Fred's leadership qualities. I like him. I had a crush on, I have a crush on Daphne. So <laughs> Shaggy, I can resonate because I'm a scary cat like him. So Scooby is cute. So, <laughs> so that's uh, law of elimination. <laughs> so basically you like the ghosts. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> or the I have a couple cat. of my ghosts here, you know, like oh, this do? one. Oh, my yeah, show them. Yeah, this is the space hook. And then you have the, what do you call this? 10,000 volt ghost. This actually came as a pack. Here's minor 49er. And, uh, oh gosh. And then this happens to be, I don't know, it's so weird, but this is the only one which doesn't stand on its own and is the witch uh, doctor from India. It's, a, it's the only Indian character I've seen in the original Scooby-Doo series. So anyway, I have this. <laughs> Maybe he's just tired. He just wants to lay down all the time. <laughs> so what was the first one i didn't i didn't get to see the first the green one what's the green one? Oh, uh, wait okay i think this is the largeness monster yeah oh sorry <laughs> if, if i talk and i have you on the full screen it's my big head no one <laughs> well that's fantastic so okay scooby-doo we'll talk, let's talk more about scooby-doo the series what's your favorite episode or movie uh, my favorite episode, I mean, to pinpoint, I would say one of the ones I would watch a million times was Scooby-Doo meeting Adam's family and Scooby-Doo meeting Laurel and Hardy. Yes. This one with Adam's family, I used to remember those lines by heart, like, you know, oh, when he says like, uh, you know, why don't you break bread with us? That's what the Flester says. And Shaggy's like, oh, you mean break your teeth with this bread? <laughs> <laughs> so those were the classics i'd never forget them <laughs> and even laurel and hardy uh, when they just meet and then they ask oh you guys had an accident no thank you i just had one <laughs> <laughs> those yeah. classics i'd never forget them <laughs> the classic writing the classic writing so um you also take scooby-doo into a different realm you take you you do you know, you do sermons with Scooby-Doo or you, you teach with Scooby-Doo. What do you do? How do you do that? And, and tell everybody what you do with Scooby-Doo in that kind of realm. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's one of the things that's very unique about me. Um, that's why I got the nickname as Scooby Pastor. And uh, I just enjoy that. <laughs> so uh, what I actually do is I take any random thing out there with Scooby-Doo and then I bring out sermons and uh, one of the best things I could do was last year I released a book. Um, it's called uh, Unveil Your Purpose. So um, I happen to dedicate this book to Scooby-Doo. I don't know if anybody has ever dedicated their own book to Scooby-Doo, but I did that. So, <laughs> so any where I'm invited to preach, I have to bring Scooby-Doo into the picture. So I bring Scooby, I mean, even on the 52nd birthday of Scooby-Doo, I did a live with another friend of mine. I think you guys, you know, uh, Wendy as well, right? So yes, I did, so we, first so year. I always try to bring Scooby-Doo into the picture and I use my Scooby voiceover, Ruby-Doo. So <laughs> I need to bring that somehow. So I used to do that. I, so that actually I started that with the 50th uh, anniversary. So I happened to uh, do a special voiceover with Scooby-Doo and then with the, I was as if, um, you know, Mr. Bean, right? So Mr. Bean comes and uh, sings the birthday song like, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Scooby-Doo. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Rinky. So... Like, you know, I used to do this kind of things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so that is one of the times when I was actually, for the first time, I was featured on an Indian national newspaper called, uh, can you see this? Yeah. So that was one of my best moments. <laughs> first time being featured on the newspaper for my Scooby collection. <laughs> so I just like to bring 
Scooby Doo into the sermon. So anywhere I'm invited to preach, you know, they would have to listen to Scooby Doo somehow in my sermon. <laughs> so yeah. I either bring it through, um, you know, like some scene, like even in my podcast. Actually, my podcast is among the top Christian podcasts in India. It's often ranking at number one on multiple platforms. So uh, even yesterday, in one of the episodes, while uh, in my sermon. while i was preaching it this was from second kings chapter 7 so the minute i wanted to give an illustration i immediately thought of scooby doo and then i got the scene from scooby doo and shaggy the minute they changed the dress and they out with the ghost so i immediately bring that up and then i use that as a sermon illustration so <laughs> oh, i just love doing so you're you're incorporating what what scooby doo what what the series does into what you're speaking about Yeah, anything under the sun. No. Scooby Doo. I uh, I have many instances when uh, Scooby Doo has spoken to me or you know ministered to me, helped me a lot. So I would just like suddenly watch something and then bring a message out of that. Like, okay, listen to this. So Shaggy and Scooby have been cornered, and then they look up to, uh, they look up, and suddenly help comes to them from above. So that immediately reminds me of the Bible verse. You know, I will look up to the heavens from whence my help cometh from. My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. So. immediately i took that and then took that scene and then put okay yes bible and yes could be and that's a great way to bring a message of encouragement to somebody and uh, one more time i did what that really was a life changing moment for me was uh, somebody made derogatory comments and that made me feel bad one day like you're useless and stump stuff like that so i just happened to go and i watched scooby doo Uh, I watched these movies a million times. Actually, <laughs> I knew the lines by heart. Like, so um, Scooby Doo. But that day, as I was watching, Shaggy is telling Velma, and uh, you know, I'm just a useless guy. I don't have much to offer. You're the brain of the gang. Daphne has a role to play. Fred's the leader. I don't have anything. And Velma encourages him and says, "Hey, listen. You are the one who can outwit the ghost because you are running faster than anything. So you have a specific role that others don't." So. that was like the light bulb moment for me that encouraged me so like this i take up any random thing that i just come up and then immediately use it to a message and because i'm also an inspirational speaker i so i just love to encourage people through anything i can <laughs> that's great and 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 i'm sure with scooby doo they're more encouraged because everyone loves scooby doo absolutely so many people tell me like you know i don't like religion as such but then i love the way you bring messages this is helpful and i never saw scooby doo in that way and it's like yeah <laughs> that's the actually with regard to that i not only scooby doo anything under the sun i i have that gift of storytelling i have to tell you this i have written lots and lots of books over the years and i started them by writing scooby doo stories so this was my actually to be honest i'll show you this so um i've been writing ever since i was young so there's this manuscript of the oldest scooby doo story that i ever wrote when i was in probably in my second grade or something so it's a small scooby story along with jesus in all so it's like a uh, they're helpless and then so with a moral in it and stuff like that with the but if you read through the spellings and all can you read it i don't know if you can see it. No, but we're posting it right now, so people can read it right now on the on the screen. So, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> uh, so um, the spellings are horrible. The storyline is terrible. Even if you ask me, I wouldn't read it. But then, uh, that was me back in the day. And ever since I was in the seventh grade, I used to I started writing lots and lots of stories. Like, uh, and uh, you can see here, Scooby Doo meets. Uh, my first story was Scooby Doo meets Spooky Ghost. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Scooby Doo meets Bob the Builder, Scooby Doo meets Justin Sleek, Scooby Doo meets Heidi, just Scooby Doo meets me of course. Oh my <laughs> Well, my favorite that, one sounds like you have a book there. I've written several books actually. Yeah, all these books are filled with You should combine see? all that to really? one big book. Yeah. Oh, one second. Your, I think the microphone of Scooby Doo. Yeah, I my thing is I want to uh, I didn't get the permissions properly yet. I don't know if you can see. So this one has some of my favorites are like Scooby Doo and the Titanic that was my favorite story I ever wrote. So uh, you know, on that ship uh, what happens is Fred is the one who saves all of us and he dies and uh, so I get to uh, like I like Daphne right? So <laughs> I and Daphne end up together. <laughs> so 
around the world with scooby doo in 80 days again scooby doo is going all around so like that i've written like literally so many so many books so i love it i love it <laughs> thank you a little, a little taught you were creating you were creating your your error you you mentioned about your podcast what is your podcast where is it and where can people listen to it yeah my podcast is a christian podcast with like inspiration plus bible study plus discussions so it's available on over 50 platforms like on including all the main platforms in, like uh, spotify apple and uh, I Heart Radio and name it, it's there. So, and my website, www.johngifter.com as well. Oh, great. And what is your podcast called? Did I miss it? It's called Feel for the Soul with John Gifter. Feel for the Soul. That's nice. That's nice. And Scooby Doo. <laughs> I'll bring in Scooby and anyway. Scooby. <laughs> my YouTube channel, if you go and check, uh, you will have a lot of videos where not a lot, but because I put it in between, in between, right? Like only in recent times, I started segregating as Scooby pastor. So you can actually find my Scooby themed videos. I'm planning to make more in the days to come. So. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get back to your collection. Is there anything there that you have not shown us yet? Actually, there's a lot that I'm not shown. Oh, then there. let's see it. Why are we talking about, about Scooby-Doo? Let's see Scooby-Doo. <laughs> uh did i show you this no okay so i'm gonna go full screen so we can see it Ta -da. that's my scooby cooling glass okay i want that oh <laughs> that's that that's that's amazing and then and then this is a scooby statue that took eight months to reach me all the way from us <laughs> It really learned, I mean, taught me a lot of patience, seriously. <laughs> and, um, I mean, name it. This was one of the weirdest things I ever found. So it's like a Scooby, um, what do you call this? Study buddy or something like that, they call it. So what was weird is they have a scale like this. Nobody in, on planet Earth can ever use this. <laughs> and there's um, a magnifying glass over here. So this was one of the weirdest things I ever found. Like you can't even put any of the pens or pencils inside this because pencils don't fit in. <laughs> so that's, that's to help you? Is that what it is it's supposed to like help you? It is supposed to help, but that's what is weird. It doesn't help in any way. <laughs> Even the scale you can't use, the magnifying glass doesn't work. So, <laughs> but it's part of collection, you know. <laughs> yeah, it sounds kind so, of hopeless. hopeless yeah, you know, good. So these are all some of my CDs and whatever was available. Now we don't even have. I was just thinking about it. We don't even have the option to play CDs my one pop. So the thing is, I used to watch in US, like people used to collect pop. You want to see it again? Yes, yes, so please, please, hold on. Yeah, hold on. yeah. I think I'm too fast, I guess. I, then there's so. Uh, yes, you're, you're like, like Scooby-Doo fast. Like you're going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to slow down anytime, let me know, I'll do that. Slow down, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, so this is, um, yeah, page markers from Scooby-Doo and uh, the Scooby pouch name for me more than collecting one toy at a time I'd rather like to collect like different items so this is a uh, I'm not sure if you can see from there so this is actually a mouse pad <laughs> so and uh, there are a lot of other toys all around this let's see the toys oh okay yeah 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 <laughs> so this is another new one that came recently. This is Shaggy. He looks really cute. And Scooby looks cute, but oh gosh. Scooby looks cute, but Scooby's I feel I was a little disappointed with the eyes. It looks like Scooby's hypnotized. <laughs> so when I showed it to my brother, I kept it in his room and he was like, come on, it looks like a demon versus dog in my room. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these are like two Scooby dolls, but then this one looks good, but this one I know it looks very fake. It looks more like a I don't know what you call this. A, a chimpanzee, not chimpanzee, was it the tall 
tallest one the giraffe right like you see so elongated and tall <laughs> but this was uh, this one i got like very cheap so when you get it for cheap just add it to your collection don't think about it <laughs> that's so, true that's true and um, again here i have a lot of these books and stuff i guess show us the books so, what they are this is but don't ask me i i i i don't read scooby books i just like to collect <laughs> i'm like i write books but i don't read books <laughs> so here's another one this was one uh, a friend of mine saw that i was a scooby fan and gifted me so very rare to find such things um and these are all i mean okay let me show it this way so i guess that way you can see so this this was one of my favorite scooby doo books So it's not actually a story book it's more like activity based so this coloring and solving mysteries i'm very bad in this drawing so <laughs> so like i would have done all these kind of things so this yeah, is you have a lot this, of you have a lot of crayon to do there yeah you haven't done any of them <laughs> i had all these comics but i just don't like comics i don't know why but i just don't like comics so I just have them because I love Scooby. <laughs> of course, you're a you, oh, you're a collector. You love all of them. So of course you do. <laughs> so so this was one of the oldest um, apart from the toothbrush of course which came all the way from US and yeah, so toothbrush is one of my favorite. That was the first item I got uh, my uncle from US had got. So Uh, I used this for three years, and I say shamelessly say that. <laughs> But um, at that time, I was not really keen on. I was not sure, like I didn't know about this collecting part. So for me, that was the first Scooby toy asset I have. So I actually, you will see your marks. I tried to cut this. I thought I'll keep only the Scooby part, and I'm glad I couldn't do it. <laughs> Now it's part of my memorabilia. So, but apart from that, we used to get all these kind of tattoos and stuff. So for me whatever i could use i used and the rest i just saved for my collection. <laughs> yeah, i want to just show you some more. So So back in the day we used to get these kind of uh, things which any random thing i find i was used to collect them. So this was some scooby stuff. Oh, that was there, and then there was. Uh, this was for some fruity. <laughs> so uh, I have like a big collection surrounding these things as well. So wait, let me just have a look. One second, if there's anything else. Okay, I didn't show you these. This is Fred. Ooh, Fred. As in, like, so yeah, here's my crush, Daphne. <laughs> So and then there's Shaggy and uh this is my oh Okay so there's Velma. Oh so she fell down you didn't care. Okay, <laughs> right, Velma's on the floor. Who cares? Who cares? And then this Scooby. Mm. So this collection actually was my for the 50th anniversary time um my grandma gifted it for me for my birthday oh years ago <laughs> that's very sweet very sweet what did you do for the 52nd <laughs> birthday of scooby doo yeah you... for 52nd with her gift only i ordered this oh that was that well that's a yeah gift for yourself <laughs> and then this was uh, the oh, i used God. to collect these scooby pens I used to write using ink pen so I have a lot of these Scooby Doo pens with me. So wow. Name it. And anywhere I find any random thing like this I just take it and keep. It may not make sense but <laughs> No, promotional items all make sense. All of that makes sense, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> anything with anything of of what you collect on it it is a collectible. So what is the most expensive thing you've ever purchased other than the shipping for the car or the van? Uh personally, oh wait, I wanted to show you this. This is something. Show me everything. 
yeah so i just love it when people actually take the time to make something like this so this is two of my friends who had done this this was a friend when she was uh i mean like in college i guess yeah and then this was two years ago with me and scooby so these are things i cherish a lot like when people do it take this time to draw or make something so <laughs> yeah tell them next time put daphne there instead of scooby ah <laughs> Actually, I had that thought uh, where I came to know uh, somebody who actually draws like, you know, animated version of you along with Scooby. So I got in touch with that person. I actually wanted that, but I was like waiting for the right opportunity to do it. Gotta take it. In the world, <laughs> in the crazy world, just, just write him and say, I want that. That's what I want. <laughs> um, so... You were asking about the costliest thing. I would personally still say this would be my costliest thing. Okay. Because, okay. yeah, because I spent more uh, on that. Uh, but apart from that, if this hadn't arrived, I would have gone for this collection only. This, that was this old set that came. That was also, uh, it took around, yeah, it takes a couple of months by the time it reaches me because it all comes from US, right? Wow. But if I order through Amazon, I didn't have this uh, tax issue. So, but that way it was cheap, but then still it was costly. Yeah. Just yeah. the product. <laughs> Crazy. I was like saying, you know, it's the 50th birthday and I need this for my birthday. And, <laughs> and then, 52nd or 50th birthday. So uh, in collecting, if, if there was no money, no tax, no tariff, anything, what would you okay. want? purchase like right now and one more thing scooby cushion what is that? Oh. a cushion he is surfing he's surfing usa there <laughs> oh adorable this was um the scooby cushion and uh scooby doo i mean of course not this uh the the laptop cover all these i got when i was uh in my college time so that was when Amazon started getting, you know, like popular. Mm -hmm. So that's when I slowly started. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So what item in the world would you want to get if you could get it right now? Um, my dream is to have my very own live mystery machine. Like, nice i would have never thought of that to have my your own band running around no even now that's my one in my in my future goals um that's my plan i want if i the problem is we don't have any vehicle that looks like a mystery machine in india so if i don't get one i at least plan to you know whatever vehicle that clo looks closest to mystery machine i'll buy it and paint it in the mystery machine format that's my dream Absolutely. so when i was young i wanted to have a fleet of mystery machines i had a, i i'm a big time day i you know i'm a storyteller story writer right so i have a very big wild imagination so uh, i used to just daydream a lot so i had a dream like you know scooby and the gang i were actually real so i would think like they're actually real so i would just imagine in i was living in that other world where um you know like Scooby and the gang actually come to my own hometown and then they live in a house near my so we end up solving mysteries we had a fleet of mystery machines like I would have the first one like mystery machine one two three up to nine that's yeah that's when I stopped it <laughs> wow that's great <laughs> and I just I just saw the mystery machine up at Universal Studios Hollywood because they have one up there yeah I've seen the pic um in the Universal Studios, right? I've seen the pic. Can't wait to actually sit on it. <laughs> yeah. You ever come to LA? Let me know. I'll take you there. We'll go. <laughs> um, uh, so this is this is not your home. Where do you usually have your whole collection? Is it usually displayed? No. Uh, the thing is, I mean, um, some of the things are displayed in the front room showcase, like my clock and mm -hmm. the Scooby-Doo collection, uh, some of them. Uh, for the most part, I'm actually, you know, looking, I mean, maybe in the future when I'm, I mean, like on my own, uh, I want to have a room dedicated just for my Scooby-Doo collection and I'll be more free to collect it, grow it even more. Like maybe in the future, I actually had some weird dreams. Like maybe build, if I'm able to build my own house, it should be like the 
even the outside should be like a Scooby Doo <laughs> thing. Yes. But I don't know. I I know all that it was a lot of money. You can it's have like, your own church. You can have your your own Scooby Doo parish. Um, actually, yeah. Part of my thing is, um, uh, you know, like I have this idea, like to have my own Scooby Doo museum kind of thing in in my area. I want to do that because. Uh, like I said, you know, when I put it in India, like probably I'm the largest collector of Scooby-Doo stuff in India, because considering all the situations that's happening, like nobody, uh, either it's the first time. And secondly, everybody who follows, they're like, oh my goodness, where do you get this? How do you get this? And it's so costly. And so probably I'm the first. So I just want to use all of that someday, maybe part of my house or somewhere, a Scooby museum and do something about it. <laughs> beautiful. No, that's beautiful. I think it's great. Because the thing is, uh, I like I said, I think I started by saying this. I used to think I'm like a hero because of my Scooby collection. <laughs> Till I went online and I saw the kind of collections that people have like in India, in US and uh, Canada. I think you may know, right? Uh, Wendy has a big oh, yeah. collection and there is uh, uh, two people who actually got the Guinness Book of World Records for the Scooby-Doo collection. I don't know if you know that. So the latest one is Daniel. She has almost 2,000 Scooby-Doo collectibles. Wow. And the uh, one before that, uh, she's the one who got the Guinness book into 2018. And the one prior to that was uh, another lady called Becky. She had 1,100 and something. that She got the Guinness book record in, in 2014. So, so when I compared... You know, I used to think like I'm some hero, but when I look at that collection, I'm like, okay, I'm just a molehill in the size of a mountain. But my collection is more like, okay, rather than focusing on just cartoon, I mean, like toys, I focus on like how much I can get in a different way. Like, okay, or Scooby Watch or a Mystery Machine. or So that is the way I try to keep it different. Absolutely. And every collection is different. Every person and any collection is, is special. So yeah, it doesn't matter how much stuff you have. <laughs> And you have some great stuff too and great stories and you're using it for good too on top of everything else so that's nice <laughs> yeah. that you're sharing the love of scooby to everybody out there uh where can people find you if they have a scooby-doo thing they want to send you that you'll get like from 15 years from now but <laughs> where can they find you online um yeah my website there's a contact form that's like if you can't reach me if you don't want to reach me through social media there's so my website is available uh, and there are people who contact me through Facebook, even though currently at this moment, I'm not that active, but sometimes I do check. But Instagram is a great way you can contact me or, my, or through WhatsApp. So these are like through website is the first thing. And Instagram is the second because. So what, what's your website address? The website address. Address, yeah. Oh, you're asking my postal address. No, no, your website address. It's johngifter.com, www.johngifter.com. <laughs> That's it. So, and what is your handle on Instagram? Same, John Gifter. Instagram.com, John Gifter. That's fantastic. Everywhere. YouTube also is just youtube.com, John Gifter. Board. Ooh, across the board. Across That's the board. one good thing for me that my name is unique. So anywhere you put on Google, there's no competitor. <laughs> Still Same thing with me. Same thing with me. Everything is all the same. <laughs> Like, what is your? It's like Mike Pingle, just Mike Pingle. I'm like, yes, just Mike Pingle. <laughs> it's not that hard. But, but back hard. in the day, um, when I when emails were the thing now that just came to India about uh, when we I was probably in my sixth or seventh grade, I think that was around 2004 or something. That was when uh, I forgot my first email address. So that was the time we had a mad rush. Like everybody wants to say, oh, I have 10 email addresses. I have 50 email addresses. So, you know, it was so stupid back. <laughs> but so uh, that time my email address was uh, johngifter.scooby-doo at yahoo.com. So, so that was... <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, John, it has been amazing. Is there anything else we haven't seen yet? You're going to throw uh, me some photos so we're going to see more stuff of yours. These were how Scooby-Doo uh, website was back in the day. If you want to know how Scooby-Doo's, I mean, the Cartoon Network website was. I have those images for people to know how it was. <laughs> so, um, in fact, uh, 
I have not completed this, but I had actually, um, and yeah, this is a mask. <laughs> okay, I took Daphne, <laughs> this Shaggy as well. And uh, I had a couple of, so this spread and then all of these. So I just never use, I don't know how I even got it, but I just kept it in my collection. I don't want, you, when you start using things, it just goes off. Like I have even those Scooby-Doo games, like, you know, the CD mm -hmm. games, but I'm not the gamer kind. I just don't like games, but I just got it. <laughs> so. well, of course. I have dress up sets, but I don't really dress up, but they were also for three-year-old girls. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, yeah. So this was, uh, sorry, yeah, I think I took the wrong page. So actually, uh, maybe I can share, like I made one video where um, I mixed, I took, the parts and parcel of uh, you know the Titanic movie and uh, somewhere on the internet I made this like a couple of years ago it's very bad in terms of the editing but I used that and I mixed up some Scooby-Doo scenes from a ship movie mm -hmm. and kind of made like my own Scooby-Doo on the Titanic so wow. <laughs> I mean it is very terrible I didn't I'm not that good in all those things but I just did what I could do. <laughs> uh, you're doing great. You're doing fine. That's, that's the love that you have for Scooby-Doo, that you're creating newer things, even before their content was content, obviously. You're amazing, John. John, thank you so much for sharing your collection with us today. And, uh, and thank you for sharing the message of scriptures and, and all that you do. And I hope people find stuff and want to send it to you. And hopefully you'll get it sometime this year. Sorry about the shipping. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think we complain about shipping in the U.S. all the time, but we have we have nothing to complain about. Nothing to complain about at all. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody out there for watching us today. Uh, if you like us, please like, comment, share us, um, share the show. Show, and uh, if you're a collector, I'd love to talk to you because I love talking about collecting and toys and everything else. So give me a give me a shout out, John. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great. Is it during the day or night? What what time is it there? Because it's like um, here now. It's um, nine thirty in the night. Oh well, you have to go to bed. <laughs> Why are you up talking to me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so it's cool. It's cool. I just enjoyed your show and thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much, Mike. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. Bye Thanks. now. Bye, John. Bye, everybody.